Praise God. Glory and honor be to the Lord. God's people, once again, before our prayer meeting, uh, we have come with uh, a message, a very vital message. And uh, this message that I want to bring before you uh, is not uh, uh, is not traditional message. And uh, you should not uh, give this message traditional meaning. No, no. And uh, neither you should go into liberal theology. It's not uh, going to be liberal theologian's message. It is going to be uh, a message very practical, a message that we need to give heed. And uh, so if the question arises in your heart, I believe on our YouTube there is uh, an address and a number you can reach. So please give heed to it. And uh, then uh, ask question if uh, there are some questions. But the message is uh, very simple. And uh, as I was praying, the Lord impressed this on my heart. What is the church? It's in a question form. What is the church? Uh, you may ask, well, I know the meaning of church. I have been going to church all my life. Can you see that? I've been going to church all my life. Or uh, someone may say, I go to church every Sunday. Now, I think they can't go because of Corona. Uh, that uh, privilege has been taken away from us. But uh, they think the building is the church. Uh, we are not also going to uh, the meaning of, uh, of what it is in Latin or in Greek or in uh, Hebrew. Uh, whatever it is, you know, we leave someone else to explain it. We will go according to the scripture. What does uh, church mean in the scripture? Uh, what does the Lord call the church? So I'm going to go slowly and carefully. But uh, I believe if you listen carefully, it will be meaningful to you. It will be a blessing to you. So what is the church? Uh, first of all, church uh, is called the body of Christ. Church is called the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, church is also called uh, the dwelling place of the Lord. Uh, church is an individual or a group of people. An individual can be a church, but basically it's a group of people that are filled with Christ Jesus. Christ occupies the church. Uh, simply spoken, the church means Christ, Christ occupies it. Now where is he, where he occupies the church? And uh, we need to be very clear about that. God is spirit. If we are not spirit, then he cannot occupy us. Uh, you remember the conversation between the Lord and Nicodemus? Nicodemus came to him by night and uh, uh, he was a scholar. He was a, a religious leader. He was a Jewish leader. And he comes to Jesus with uh, wonderful words for him because Jesus deserves all these words because he has seen him. And uh, let's start with this. So church is a church when he, he, it is spiritual, or it is a spirit. Individually, it is a spirit. And uh, uh, this is not my word. This is not my idea. Uh, this is a scriptural. So let's read it, and uh, you will know it very clearly, that uh, to be a church, one has to be born of the spirit. One has to be spirit. That's why church is not physical. It is spiritual. It is spiritual. And I'm saying this on the basis of what the scripture says. Uh, let no one uh, pick up quarrel with me on this. Uh, the church is spiritual because it is made up of spirits. And uh, these are the words of Jesus. But let's go to this conversation. And uh, it's a very uh, simple conversation. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. 
for no man can do this miracle that you do except God be with him. Good, appropriate, and true words. Jesus answered and said unto him, Jesus didn't even answer what he was saying. He didn't say thank you for such word, such a good word, Nicodemus. Uh, rightly put, or what will you drink? What will you eat? And no such things, no such formality. Jesus went straight to the purpose because he knew what was in the heart of Nicodemus. Jesus speaks to him. Uh, it has got no link with what uh, Nicodemus said. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, in your heart, you are thinking of the kingdom of God. Where will I be? Where will I spend my eternity? The simple fact is the way you are, or the way you were born, even though you are born to a very great religion, a religion that the Lord honors, the religion uh, that the Lord uh, gave the law. It's a good religion, but you see, uh, your living in this religion will be not, uh, will be not worth going into, into heaven. That's what Jesus is saying to him. You can't go to heaven. Uh, with that uh, commitment you have, God, with that religion, it's a Jewish religion. I've got a covenant with that religion, no doubt. I made covenant with you. But if you stay the way you are, though you are a religious man, though you are a scholarly man, you will not enter, or uh, nothing to do with enter at the moment, to simply say, you will not see the kingdom of God. You're not worthy of the kingdom of God. You won't be able to see. You have to be born again. He says it later. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus is speaking spiritual things. He is stuck with the physical thing. He is no good for heavenly calling at the woman because he hasn't got that uh, knowledge, that understanding, or that spirit that will make one worthy of heaven. Verse 5, Jesus answered, that's the second time he's saying to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that means the word of God is a symbol of water, and of the spirit. And of course, the spirit of God is the one who works this wonderful work. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And then the verse 6 is worth taking note. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. So it is absolutely necessity, or I should say absolute necessity, are absolutely essential that to be the part of church are to be called church, one has to be born again. And when he when he's born again, he was uh, first born of flesh and he was flesh. But now Jesus says that he is born of spirit and he is a spirit. And if uh, church is made up of those who are spirit, can it be earthly? Can it not only be heavenly? Can it not be simply a spiritual? So if the church is just earthly, it does earthly thing, and it's just like the earthly people, it is just like the people in the world, it is not a church. You can call it any time, you can call it an institution, you can call it a social gathering, but it cannot be church. So first of all, let it make let us make it very clear, God's people, that the church is spiritual because it is made up of born again children of God who has, were born of spirit and they are spirit. And if they are all spirit, then the church is spiritual. Have you got any problem with that? It's so simple. So I don't think many people will easily accept what I'm trying to say. But I'm simply trying to prove very clearly from the words of Jesus, he who is born of flesh is flesh. I'm quoting from 
John chapter 3 and verse 6. He was born of flesh as flesh. And he was born of spirit as spirit. And Jesus told him once again, uh, you must be born again. So in eight verses, Jesus told him uh, three times that you must be born again. So church is, uh, uh, is made up of born again people, uh, spiritual people. If they are all spirits and the church consists of those people, then of course the church is spiritual. Is it clear? And I don't think anyone will have any problem with the believing the church is spiritual. And then the church is heavenly. Of course, uh, head is heavenly, body will be heavenly too. Uh, church is called the body of Christ. Church is also called uh, the bride of Christ. Church is also called the temple of Christ, temple of the Holy Spirit. So church is all this, it's a house of God. It is the place where God dwells. If the Lord doesn't dwell in a church and in a people, it cannot be church. And you will ask me another question, and this question may come to your mind. How does God dwell in man? But let me tell you, going back to the first chapter of Genesis, God made man to dwell in him. Man was supposed to be a Venetian man. Women are included in it. God sees them one. So God's people, I'm simply saying that God created human being to dwell in them. But God is spirit. And so that's why God, God placed in man spirit. Spirit was placed in man. Man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. We have spent... We have spoken it over and over again. And this is what the scripture says. If you read chapter 2 of Genesis verse 7, it is written very clearly. That God formed man out of the dust of the earth. And then he breathed. It was not the giving of divine life. Divine life comes in a different manner. Divine life is Christ. The coming of divine life simply means coming of a person. And that person declared very clearly when he came on this earth, I am life. He simply said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that life is Zoe, Z-O-E. And that Zoe is divine life. It is the life that no angel has got. It's a life that no other creature has got. This is the life that only lived in Godhead. That simply meant uh, that uh, before the time this life was in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, this life was in no one else. So God made man to be a dwelling place, dwelling place of himself. That is an honor only to human being. This honor is not to any angel. This honor is not to the elders, though they were created before man. This, this honor is not for the cherubim that is four-headed uh, creature. This cherubim is not for seraphim. Seraphim, of course, are uh, fiery, burning with fire. And it, it was not with any creature. Even in Lucifer, this life was not there. This life was not there. Lucifer didn't have this life. And man was not made with this life. He was made by the breath of God, but breath of God and the life of God and the divine life is absolutely different. Divine life actually is to do with the relationship. And of course, God had relationship with Adam when he created him. I'm trying to make it very simple, but there were outward relationships. From the very, very beginning, God made man to have inward relationship. It is inward relationship with God. And if you want to read in the New Testament, in 17th chapter of Luke, it's written, I think it's about 20 words in which it is written so clearly. Uh, he said, the kingdom of God is within you. He establishes his kingdom inside. 
It's not, uh, and Jesus said it very clearly, they will not say here is the kingdom or there is the kingdom because this, he said the kingdom of God is within you. And that's another thing people can be puzzled with that. So God made man to be his dwelling place. If you want to read further, and if you want to have a clearer understanding of this, you must study uh, John chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, all that is about relationship. You and me, the Lord said, I in you. And even in uh, when you read in my, in my house, there are many uh, mentioned, the word there actually is dwelling places. What Jesus is saying is, I am one of the dwelling place for my father. And when I have uh, paid the price for the sin of human race, when I have sacrificed my life, laid on my life, and do you know what that life is, what he laid down? Was suke. It was not zoe. There's a difference between two words. And uh, you want to know the difference? You can go to uh, John chapter 10 and verse 10. And when you read verse, uh, verse uh, 11, the word is different. He says, I, I laid on my life. And when he speaks about that life, the word there is suke. What he laid down was the life that was in the flood, but Jesus could not be killed. He had a divine life, and that divine life he committed in the hand of the Father. Some people have got this misunderstanding. Uh, did God die on the cross? It's a funny idea. Uh, but uh, suke life was given for human race. It's nothing to do with religion. It's nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with color. What? Does, it doesn't matter what color you are. He paid the price for every human being. So God's people, it has had to be the dwelling. So if you want to understand the meaning of church, church is a dwelling place of the Lord. And then the church. I tell you very clearly, church, if it is built by a man, doesn't matter how good is that man in building, it can be overcome by the power of darkness. It can be overtaken by the power of darkness. It can be overcome by sin. It can be the person who is sinning. But my friend, if Jesus has built the church, and if you go, come with me, and if you want to know it, you will see it. Jesus himself said that I will build my church. I believe it is in the chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16. And uh, uh, we read here in, uh, uh, what verse shall we read? Uh, I said to you, Jesus said, uh, uh, verse 18, when it was revealed to uh, Peter, the apostle of the Lord, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ is a Christ, the son of the living God, then, of course, Jesus said it was a revelation from my father. It was not because of his cleverness. And verse 18, he said, I say unto, unto thee that thou art Peter. That is a pebble. The word is in Greek, pebble. And upon this rock, and that is Petra, the two words are used in this verse. Verse 18, the first word is used for Peter. It's just a little pebble. It's not worth building a building. And upon this rock, and that rock is in Greek, Petra. Petra is the rock. On that rock, the church is built, not on Peter, as some people wrongly teach that the church was built on Peter. No, it could not be built on Peter. Peter was not worth becoming the foundation for the church. Church is the body of Christ. Church is the bride of Christ. It cannot be built on any man. It must be built on Christ because it is a matter of kind, according to the kind. Church or the bride is going to be according to the kind. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will build my church. And if a church is built by a man, it can be simply a Tower of Babel. 
it may not be acceptable to God. So God's people church is built by Christ. Yes, God can use a person as a vessel. God can use anyone who is willing to lay down his talent and be willing to be used as a vessel by the Lord. Then, of course, church can uh, be, he can be a vessel that Christ will fill. And after filling that vessel, he will build himself a church. Because he himself said, I will build my church. Not man. It's not man's idea. It is heavenly, it is spiritual. And Jesus said, I will build my church. And upon this rock, I, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means schemes of hell are worthless before the church. Church is over them. Church will overcome every scheme of the enemy. Maybe devil is trying to destroy your health. Devil is trying to destroy your family. Devil is uh, making schemes to trip you or to, uh, to cause you to fall. It will not happen because the church is built on the Lord. As I've said very clearly, man can only build Tabor Babel, cannot build such a magnificent and glorious body of Christ that is church. Only Christ can build the church. My part or your part, a child of God, who is, who is listening is simply be the vessel. You make yourself available as a vessel. You make yourself a surrender before thee as a vessel. And then, of course, you may be a silver vessel or you may be gold vessel. It depends how much you're willing to surrender, how much you're willing to yield to the Lord. It has to do with yieldedness. Am I willing to yield completely? Or am I going to keep something behind? So God's people, the church must be built by the Lord. If it is built by a man, it will be like Ishmael. It will be man's idea. You know, there is a difference between Ishmael and Isaac. Uh, there are two. One was born of uh, Hagar, uh, Egyptian maiden. The other was born of Sarah. The promise was with, with Sarah. And Sarah uh, received the promise. He gave it up at one point, And he just rolled his responsibility on Hagar. And uh, it was a convenient way. And our father Abraham somehow decided to obey Sarah and ended up uh, Ishmael. And Ishmael is always the persecutor of Isaac. Then he had to take that bitter pill. And when Sarah said, put this son of your Egyptian woman out of the house, it will not be partner or it will not inherit with my son Isaac. And uh, Abraham resisted a bit. But then God spoke to him. He said, friend, you listen to her first. Now you have to listen to her again. This is the fruit of your disobedience. This is the fruit of what you did before. Now it has happened. Now you cannot escape this thing. So God's people, what I'm simply saying is we need to live a surrendered life. We have a part to play in our Christian life. And what is our part? We empty ourselves as vessel. And then he fills himself with the vessel. Because the problem is we can be filled with ourselves all our Christian life. And it will not be of much worth. It will not be very fruitful. It will not be useful. It will not be the life that will be rewarded well. So God's people, this is a church. Church is the body of Christ. And if church Christ, the head, is spiritual, don't you think body shall be also spiritual? If uh, Christ is spiritual, don't you think our bride also will be spiritual? I'm talking about spiritual thing here. It is about union. It is about communion. What kind of communion you say you're talking about? I'm talking about uh, the communion or union 
that is life-based communion, that is a divine life-based communion, and that is given very clearly. There can be many other scriptures, but I'm giving only one scripture for you to understand that this is a spiritual relationship. It is a relational thing. It is not just talk. We are in relationship with him. The problem is church does not understand. Church has made Christianity just a religion, some rules and regulations, some doctrine. And because of the doctrines, we are divided and we are not uh, uh, useful a lot. It's written very clearly. Chapter 6 and verse 17 of 1 Corinthians, it is, it is written so clearly. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit because the Lord is spirit. And if the church is going to join with the, the bridegroom as a bride, it has to be spiritual. That will bring her to unity. That will bring her to communion. That will bring her into oneness. That oneness is spiritual oneness, God's people. Don't try to bring it into physical thing. God is not physical. God is spirit, Jesus said very clearly. And this relationship is life-based relationship. Whose life? The life of Christ. The life that is called divine life. It is not Adamic life. It is not the life with which we are born. Of course, we are born with Adamic life. Of course, we are born with sin nature. Of course, we need to be born again to be united to the Lord. And you say, well, let, give us some scripture about what you are saying. I'll give you a scripture uh, that is simply uh, will explain what I'm trying to explain to you. I don't need to labor on that. I need, don't need to work hard to convince you. It speaks so clearly to you. This is a church. This is a, uh, the church in reality. And if this is not... Uh, applicable to you or to your institution. You may be uh, 10 members or 10,000 members. Doesn't make any difference. If Christ is not filling you, you're not a church. You see, that's a very bold statement. Well, it's not my statement. It's the statement of the word of God. If you're not filled with the, the life of Christ, if Christ is not filling uh, that 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 group of people are individual. They are not the church. They can be called anything else, but not the church. Church is a body of Christ. Church is the temple of Christ. Church is not where we say, uh, I go to church. No, you don't go to church, my friend. You are the church. That is a wrong idea. That is a wrong concept. And I think Corona has helped us a bit in understanding that we don't go to church. We are the church and we can be church on the Zoom meeting. We can be church on the telephone. We are the church. We are not going to church. At least I think that idea is broken. Are you not thankful for that? I'm thankful that all my life I've been hearing, oh, I go to church. Do you go to church? Yes, I go to church. Every Sunday I go to church. I go to church for a prayer meeting. You don't go to church. You are the church. And if you are not filled with the life of Christ, of course, that's what you will say. I go to church. Half an hour or two hours, I'm there. The Lord is there. And then I say goodbye to him. And I come home. And after one week, I go back again. Here am I, Lord. And he is calling a building the church. And that is, uh, that is innocent. That is really sheep. Uh, someone was saying... <laughs> Someone was saying in his imagination that father and son were looking at the Christian, these innocent people, uh, these people who know very little. And, uh, and the father, maybe our son said, Dad, what shall we call them? And uh, they were looking at the church. And uh, they said, well, they look like sheep. They are quite uh, ignorant sometimes. Sometimes they follow people without thinking because this is what the sheep will do. Uh, let's come to, uh, that's just kidding. Uh, don't take it too seriously for that. But we are the sheep, of course. The Lord calls us sheep. He is the shepherd. We are the sheep. And he has given his life for us. 
And this is written about him. It's about Jesus, chapter 1 of Ephesians, verse 22. And hath put all things under his feet. Everything is under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Of course, he's head of everything. And particularly, he is the head of the church. If that head is heavenly, then the body is heavenly too. If the head is heavenly and body is earthly, there will be no connection. It will not be connected. It will be severed from the tree because he is the vine on the branch. I need to be connected to him. If the church is not spiritual, I'm saying it over and over again. And if you have got a quarrel, you have to pick up this quarrel with God. Don't fight with me. I'm simply reading to you from the scripture. And the scripture simply says, Church are a group of people who are possessed by the Lord. Church is the group of people that is filled by Jesus Christ. If a group of people is not filled with the life of Jesus, with the, uh, with the power of Jesus, it's not a church. I am not ashamed to say this. If someone is upset with this statement, he should put uh, this debate with God, and I think he will be satisfied when God speaks to him, if he really wants to hear from the Lord. And verse 20 says, which is his body? He is spiritual. He is the head. Why not the body head? Why does the body not showing that my head is Christ? Headless body is a? Of course, dead body, you can say, yes, he is a dead body. Headless body, but sometimes we see church like headless body. It has got to the own scheme, it's got their own way, uh, it is it's running its own business, and uh, Jesus is not doing anything I am doing. I'm doing everything. And with this, I am doing anything, he goes into eternity and he appears before the seat of uh, uh, of Jesus Christ, where he gives reward, and he says, I don't know you. I do not know you. And where does he send them? Well, if you want to carry on reading, in chapter 8, you will see he sends them where there is gnashing of teeth, where is grinding of teeth, where there is outer darkness. And that's not a good place. And I tell you, my friend, many of the preacher or teacher or big men, big pastor will end up there. Because they have done everything themselves. And, G and they say so. They are mighty men. Uh, they say in chapter 7, verse 23, I believe, uh, they say we have done um, great things. We have driven our demons. We have, uh, uh, we have prophesied. We have done great miracles. And he would say, I don't know you. I do not know you. I had no intimacy with you. I had no intimate relationship with you. You did it by soulish power. Your soulish power was so strong. You were living a demic life because Adam was living soulish life, wasn't he? He could have eaten the tree of the fruit of life and be spiritual, but before he did it, he fell. And then Christ had to come and die for him. Now God's people, Christ had come. He has died for the sin of the world. He has paid the penalty. By treason or by sinning in Eden, man's spirit was virtually dead. Dead to God. Yes, it was alive to Satan. It came under, under Satan and it was dead to God. Jesus' sacrifice quickened it. Scripture says very clearly, if you keep reading chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 1 says, he quickened us. God quickened us. Jesus quickened us. Verse 23 says, which is his body. And then listen to this very clearly because I have been speaking it for such a long time. And if it didn't get you yet, it will get you now. It says here, the fullness of him. So what is the church? The fullness of Christ. If it is the fullness of human being, it is the, if it is the fullness of some arrogant a preacher or teacher or a pastor, it's not the church. It is not the church. Church is the fullness of Christ. This is what the Bible says. These are the scriptural things. 
I'm talking about scriptural things. I'm not giving you a message that is scholarly or something that is beyond your understanding. I'm coming down to the earth. I'm coming to scriptural interpretation, which is his body. The church is his body. The fullness of him. That means Christ. The, that filleth all in all. He is the filler of everything. He sustains everything. He is the creator of everything. Does it not say about him in John chapter 1 and verse 1? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So God's people church is his fullness. And I must tell you the truth. It may upset you. But I'm simply saying. If it is not the fullness of Christ. It is not the church. It can be an organization. It can be an institution. It can be called a church. But that doesn't mean if it is called the church. It has become a church. It is a functional thing. It is not a positional thing. Don't you call it position. It's not positional. It is functional. What does it mean? It has to be the fullness of Christ. And the question before me is. Am I filled with myself? Am I filled with Christ? Does he fill me? Or do I fill myself? If I'm filled with myself and I insist on calling myself the church, I would simply appeal to you. I won't be hard on you. I will appeal to you. Why don't you make a decision today? Why don't you submit to him? Why don't you let him have... Uh, your inward, inward place completely. Why doesn't he fill your spirit completely? Why doesn't he also fill your, uh, fill your whole being? Why doesn't he bring your soul and your body under control? He fills your spirit because he is spirit. He lives in your spirit. He doesn't live in your soul. But he can control the soul. If you let him, he can handle the soul. He can uh, uh, check things in the soul that are contrary to his will. And he can put them together for the glory of God. So God's people, the simple message, what is the church? I would simply say, this is the body of Christ. He is the head. Church is spiritual. Church is heavenly because head is heavenly. Church is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It cannot be earthly. If someone calls or a movement calls itself church and is filled with themselves, with their idea, with their own teaching, and they're not filled with that person, Jesus Christ, that cannot be real church. Real church is filled with him. It's the bride of Christ. Let's pray that we will keep Keep seeing in this mirror of the word of God. I have just put before you a mirror. Look, what does your face look like? Church is going to be in the image of Christ. If it is not in the image of Christ, if it is in the image of the world, because I tell you, the world has entered into the church. I going to say it anyway and uh, don't be angry with me church mainly if you look around is influenced by the world sometimes it is hard to make any distinction between the church and the world that should not be only Christ filling can make a group of people or a person a church. Let's pray. Father, it's a privilege to be filled with you. It's a privilege to be occupied by you. It is a privilege to be possessed by you. We are owned by you anyway because you have shed your blood for us. So Lord, it's our prayer that everyone who has heard they will check their progress in you. Are they spiritual? Because the church 
is supposed to be spiritual. It's meant to be holy. It's meant to be heavenly because head is heavenly. It, ha it is meant to be spiritual because the head is spiritual and is spirit. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this great honor to be part of you. It's an honor to be your body. It's an honor to be a temple. It's an honor to be a dwelling place for the most high God, who is spirit and who has placed in us spirit. He has put in us spirit so that we may be his dwelling place. We are so grateful for this great honor to be a dwelling place for you, to the glory of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you.